himself as a, a pretty straight sort of guy in the same way that Tony Blair did, yet you still lack trust in your economic competence and, and honesty in some ways. Is turning that round in the week that remains before polling day an impossible mission? Our economic strategies are fully costed, are fully prepared, are fully presented, and unlike every other party, we put them out there for discussion and debate. Some might say, well, that's a high-risk strategy. No, I think people should know what we're proposing to do, should know the tax rises we're proposing for corporations and the very wealthiest, and should know the benefits of it. Chi and Becky have set out a very good strategy for our industry this morning. That requires investment, but it requires investment in people as well. So take the whole thing together. We invest in preschool, we invest in primary schools, we invest in secondary, we don't burden future generations of students with massive debt, we glory in their achievements at university, at wonderful universities like York, and the contribution they make, obviously to enrich their own lives, but to enrich all of our lives as well. And so I think our economic strategy is innovative, carefully thought out and something that is very exciting. We cannot go on being an economy that's overheated on the financial services sector in the southeast, leaving whole swathes of former mining and former heavy industrial areas underemployed, low wage, insecure jobs and precious little investment. So we start with um, strategic investment in rail, in broadband, we improve rail links across the north. We improve feeder rail links such as Hull to the East Coast Main Line and there are many others around the country to improve that. And so that way we get, begin to get a bit better economic balance. And when Rachel and Chi are talking about uh, an industrial strategy, we bring all factors of industry together. So we have a council for each of the main industries in which all those innovative ideas come together and government is at the table investing in new technology, in new ideas and in research. Why is it that Germany has so much greater proportion of its gross national income from manufacturing industry than us? Why do they have such more, such highly productive industries compared to us? The answer is they've had basically a cross-party agreed strategy for the past 50 years that everyone would invest in industry to make sure everybody benefits. In this country, we're still paying the price of um, the Thatcherite deregulation of the economy and deindustrialization of our society. And I'll conclude on this point because we started with the environmental question. I believe passionately that we have to do everything possible to support and defend our ecosystems and our natural world. I'm absolutely passionate about that. You don't do it by walking away. You do it by using all the brilliance of technology to carefully manage and monitor the natural resources we use, prevent pollution and promote um, a sustainable environment. And our strategy can only be achieved if you have a government that seriously understands that and seriously involved. And I tell you what, this manifesto is not just the product of the Labour Party and trade unions and shadow cabinet and national executive. It's hundreds and hundreds of different voluntary sector organisations that have shared their knowledge and expertise with us. This is a product of a lot of very creative, very clever, creative thinking. And that's something it can deliver for this country. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at uh, economic competence, shall we? The current government has uh, brought us into £700 billion worth of debt, which is more than any Labour government in history. Productivity has dropped, it's stagnating, we've got a productivity gap that the Chancellor acknowledges himself but does very little to address that. Wages have stagnated, people are now 10% worse off than they were before the financial crash and that is absolutely ludicrous. And then we've got businesses up and down the country who simply aren't getting the support they deserve. They didn't get the support they deserve with business rates and they're not getting access to finance. I think it's £22 billion worth of a gap that the National Audit Office estimates by 2017 in terms of the cash that businesses can't get access to. 
What we're delivering today is a transformative vision to give businesses the tools that they need to succeed. It's about creating a fertile business environment by investing in infrastructure and skills. It's about transforming the way we look at our economy and our industrial strategy by the creation of innovative missions that deal with society's issues. And it's about looking at sectors individually and assessing the support that they need to prosper. And I'll give you a couple of examples of how businesses would have done well had Labour been in power. There was one particular manufacturer in the North West who had exorbitant energy costs. And a few years ago, they said to me that they wanted to install solar panels on the roof of one of their factories. They've got a massive manufacturing site and it would have made their energy costs neutral. But the way that the business rate system treated them as plant and machinery meant that it wasn't cost efficient. So they didn't do it. Second example, same manufacturer was dedicated to bringing back offshore uh, supply chains into the UK to create jobs locally. They'd found a Polish company who wanted to come to the UK and base themselves next to the factory, which would have created hundreds of jobs. But again, because of the way that plant and machinery was treated in business rates, it wasn't cost effective. Now, if Labour's plans to exclude many forms of plant and machinery had been implemented when we'd asked government to do that, that company probably would be operating here today and hundreds of new jobs would have yeah. been created.